Oh, okay. I'm sorry, my brother. I greet everyone in the peace of the Lord Jesus. Since we're already standing, we're going to open up, open the Bible in the last book, Revelations. Chapter 1. We're going to read verse 17. Verse one, uh, chapter one, verse seventeen. There it is. It says the following. And when I saw him. I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Amen. The brethren may sit down. I'm going to sing a song, praise group. Not ready? Okay, that's right. So this text that we have just read speak to us about an experience of a man called John. He, the experience that he had with the Lord. And this experience is to show the word says that to show to John and the servants of Jesus that the time was near to review what was about to happen. It was a revelation of God to John and to all the servants of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in this chapter, it says that Jesus he is the faithful witness he is the first born he is the prince of the kings of the earth the word says that he is the one who loves us and the one that in his blood washed us of all our sins he's the one that gives us a place in heaven. He's the one that gives us a dwelling on his eternity. And the words says that these revelations were for all the church. And the Lord has shown to his servant called John, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Tatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea into every period of the church so the lord was showing that throughout all the periods of the church here on earth he was going to reveal to his servants what was soon was soon was going to happen what was about to happen and he said that he comes with the clouds and every eye will see but for John, in order for John to have this experience with the Lord, in order for him to leave this experience, it was necessary for him to be removed from the place where he was. He was in the island of Patmos, and he was taken away from that, not the body, but he was uh, raptured there in spirit, and he was taken to heaven. And he was taken to eternity. And he saw things that he had never seen before. He heard words that he had never heard before. And came to his heart things that he never thought that 
could exist. And the Lord he speaks with John. He reveals to John all those details regarding the, all of the things that were about to happen and were about to succeed. And it is interesting to notice that when John he begins to hear the revelations, he, ha he realized that it was a great voice that was speaking to him. And this great voice that was speaking to him was like the voice, the words, as it says, it was the voice of a trumpet. And in the past, when the trumpet was blown in a few moments, it was so that the people would get ready for the battle. In the other moments, it was to proclaim that the king is was arriving, that the king was coming back. Hallelujah. That was the proclamation for John and for the entire church that Jesus was coming. Jesus is coming. Maranatha, blessed be the name of our Lord. And John, he had, he had met Jesus. His origin, Jesus' history. He had walked with Jesus for a period of his life. He saw Jesus crying, his pains, Jesus' afflictions, the humiliations he had the, he got, had to go through, his necessities. Jesus was poor. He witnessed all those things. So he, he uh, already knew the first Jesus, the Jesus that everyone else knew the historical Jesus, the Jesus that is written and described in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Jesus that perished, that suffered, that died on a cross. The Jesus also that resurrected but those things didn't cause the servant John to fall at Jesus' feet like he was dead or to surrender himself completely. If everyone knows the historical Jesus, the world speaks about Jesus. In a few days, they will be celebrating the passion of Christ. A while ago, a few days ago, they were celebrating the birth of Jesus. Everybody knows. And John saw Jesus resurrected. And he period is, he didn't fall to the ground. He had an experience. John saw Jesus in a moment of hunger. People sometimes there were three days, the crowd that was following Jesus were three days without eating, and Jesus felt compassion for them. There was a young man with uh, had bread, fish and bread, and thousands of people were uh, nourished with those uh, fish and bread. And he, John, didn't sur surrender himself uh, while witnessing these things. It is not the things of this world. Uh, uh, what you see with your eyes that is going to make man surrender himself. 
It is not the materialistic gospel that is being proclaimed out there, which is distorting completely the plan and the project of God for the life of every man. This is not the gospel. This is not this is not where Jesus wanna take you, my brother and sister, each one of us. Jesus and a certain point in one of his preachings he says something interesting. He says if someone invite you to go to walk with him one mile, walk with him two miles. In other translation it says if somebody forces you and sometimes we are even forced to walk with Jesus sometimes because we don't have any option we are forced to do this you have hunger you have you're thirsty you have a necessity material necessity whatever it might be like the woman of the flow of blood after she had spent everything that she had or like the prodigious son once he had nothing else left sometimes man is like this he is forced by circumstances to walk with Jesus it is the Jesus this is this is the first Jesus the acts the operates and manifests his power his grace his favor his mercy but if you walk just one mile we will not see this Jesus described here in Revelations the Jesus glorified that's why it's necessary for you to walk a second mile and the second mile you don't do this be because you are forced to it the second mile is by, by option the first you, because you are forced to and sometimes because you're polite oh I'm going to the church because somebody invited me so you don't uh, disappoint the person who invited you then you go one mile but the second mile the second mile is by option the second is by choice and more than that the second is for gratitude the second mile speaks of the fellowship between God and man through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and it is in this second mile that we'll be able to know the, sec the last Jesus the one who is the first everybody knows he operates signs, wonders and miracles everybody knows about this Jesus but the second Jesus the last Jesus is for those that walk by gratitude by choice by option in his presence and John did this he walked by choice for gratitude by choice he was able then to enjoy of what the eye didn't see the uh, ear didn't hear and what had come to his heart the word says my brethren that when jo John presents himself when he sees the majesty of our Lord he sees a man dressed with long garments which speaks of the priestlyhood of the high highest priestlyhood of Jesus that one that reconciles us with God was the mediator between God and man Jesus Christ he understand that no other name exists that would allow us to be saved he sees the priestlyhood of the universal priesthood of the Christian you are saved by the precious blood of Jesus he sees the Bible 
that it was placed on his chest a gold belt which speaks of the justice of God uh, as a just judge so he sees Jesus glorified with his hair white like a white wool it speaks of the holiness of a God because our God is holy he sees his eyes like towards a flame fire flames of fire a God that sees everything, that knows everything, a God that burns every impurity, every sin, a God that removes any cold, spiritual coldness. He, he sees also that from his mouth comes a sword with two edges. He, Jesus always has a word, revealed word to his servants. He sees this feet like a shining brass showing that the servant of the Lord has to walk on the light of the Lord because he is the light and when he saw all those things when he had this experience of the Lord the word says that he felt like dead but he was not dead falling falling to the ground like that is one thing dying is something else he could, should not could not have died he could not have fallen to the ground and died because Jesus is not dead Jesus is life he fell to the ground like that but the Bible says whoever believes in me will never die do you believe in this so he felt like dead but he was not dead and my brother, my brother and sister, who you who are here in the house of the Lord, is there anything better than to fall like that at the feet of our Savior? He felt like that at the feet of his Savior. And it is interesting that Jesus did something at that moment. The word says that he he extended his arm, his right arm. John was uh, in the island of Patmos. There was a prisoner there. For sure, many had already abandoned him. He was forgotten there in the light and the island, left to to die. He could have thought with himself, nobody cares about me, nobody remembers me. But there's a text in the Bible that says, Can a mother forget about her own son? But even if she forgets, however, I will never forget about you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And when John falls like dead, the word says that Jesus extended his hand towards him. And there's a song that says, when Jesus extended his hand, he extended his hand towards me. I was poor. I was lost without God, without Jesus. But he extended his hand. So he saved me. John was already a servant of God. And the Lord extended his hand towards him. Maybe you went in here tonight knowing only the first Jesus, the beginning. But the Lord wants you to leave this place tonight knowing this last Jesus, the Jesus glorified that has tonight extended his hand towards you, my brother and sister, you who are in the house of the Lord. And the Lord said something interesting to John. He said, John, fear not. Many times people uh, become afraid. They are concerned. They're worried. Is a word that 
the age is preventing me from remembering and it escaped from me. People are afraid when they are in the presence of God. I had this experience before. When I was 13, 14 years old, I was afraid of passing in front of a church because I was afraid that if I went there, I was going to die. Because my situation when I was 13 years old, I was. I had this understanding. I knew I was a sinner. And maybe you, my brother and sister, have this understanding. When God reveals Himself, when He speaks, when He manifests, when He shines upon you, you, you see, shines His glory upon us, we may feel afraid about that. But the advice of the Lord Jesus is that we should not be afraid. There's nothing for us to be afraid of, my brother and sister, because the hands of the Lord Jesus, they are extended towards you. Hallelujah. This is my God. Blessed be your name, Lord.
not I am the first and the last Jesus he is a project a complete project for our lives the Lord has shown tonight that there is a person here that is receiving a gift from the part of the Lord and the brother could see in the vision which was a crown the crown given by God is related to to our salvation the words says that God made us kings and priests blessed be the name of the Lord the Lord has, has a place for this person his eternity the Lord has also has shown a man and this man was spiritually laying down on a, uh, uh, a wa uh, walking freezer so what does that mean a person inside of a walking freezer whoever stays there is somebody's already dead um, a person is placed there so the body does not decay so it speaks it speaks about a person that is going through a stream spiritual coldness and the person uh, uh, him or herself thinks that they are spiritually dead but the text says like that not dead you're not dead because Jesus is still alive in your in your heart he brought you tonight to reproach every spiritual coldness to place you again standing in his presence because the desire of our God is to continue to speak and, and revealing himself in your life. Amen. The church will stand up. I'm going to ask a word of prayer. Lord, we praise you. You have heard our plea, our supplication. True Lord, you know our pain. You know our walk. And you have supplied to all our needs, Lord. We don't have anything to fear because you overcame this world. And we are victorious, Lord. We praise the holy name, Lord. Because you have brought uh, comfort to our hearts. You have brought joy to our, our, to our hearts. You have reproach, any coldness, any anguish from our souls. We praise you, Lord, because it's good to be in your presence. Because, Lord, we, we are, our thirst is quenched when we are in your presence, Lord. Praise, best be your name, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray, glory, glorify for another day, enjoying the fellowship with you, Lord, with the Holy Spirit. We ask, Lord, that you may continue to operate and manifest your power and your grace and speak, Lord, individually with each person here in this place in dreams and visions and Lord that we, you may every day revealing all your plan all your project preparing Lord to hear this voice like a trumpet and get, getting us ready to be with you in eternity Lord take us home in peace under your prote protection we pray in the holy name of Jesus in your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God our good and eternal Father, 
and the sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit be with all the people of the of God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. The service has come to its end. You, my brother and sister who are here tonight, you are very welcome to this place. We have services on Wednesday at 8 and Thursday at 8, Saturday at 7.30 and Sunday in the morning at 10.30 and then at night 7 30 you are invited to come back to come many more times if you desire a clarification regarding the word or the spiritual gift that was shared remain where you are and raise your hand and the brethren they are here will give you the proper assistance Thank you. 